NFL draft coming up at the end of this month. We're going to get talking about that here on the Bucketeers. We also have Antonio Brown news or no news. We'll be talking about him briefly. Schedule release, official 17th game announced, and we'll get into our opponent and how that game may look, a familiar opponent we faced in 2019 from the AFC. There's a lot to talk about in Buccaneers land, and this offseason keeps going along, so let's talk about it. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Bucketeers podcast. I am your host, Tampa Tones. We are here tonight joined by one of the crew members. It's a shallow episode, a little short one, but still a great one. We got one of our beloved co-hosts, Stunna in the build, and we'll bring him in here in a minute. I'm your host, Tampa Tones. We got a great show tonight. We have some great topics, as mentioned in the intro. We're going to be talking draft, and yeah, that's already at the end of this month. Could you believe that? The draft is already at the end of this month. That is crazy to think about. Feels like just last year's draft with all the COVID restrictions and whatnot, so that's crazy. And then we're going to get into the schedule release perhaps in the 17th game and who our opponent may be for that we're going to get into the front on antonio brown what's going on there and that is what we will be covering in this bucketeers episode obviously a little more chatter here and there shout out to smack apparel for the great apparel um this shirt could be found on their website along with so many more t-shirts they have a lot of buccaneers ones a lot of sports ones in general go to smack apparel and find some great shirts also don't miss out on the chance of winning a bucketeers t-shirt throughout the nfl draft before the draft we already have one giveaway done And we're going to announce a winner on Twitter when we release this episode as well. So that's all coming tomorrow, Wednesday, on episode release day per usual. Without further ado, we're going to bring in one of our great co-hosts of the Bucketeers, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Stunna. Stunna, how are we doing tonight, my man? Um, You know, just us two, but it's still great Bucks talk. Any day we can talk about by the great organization to Tampa Bay Buccaneers is an awesome day. Awesome day. Anytime we can talk about the champions, and I'm actually Tampa bound on Thursday. I'll be in town WrestleMania weekend, going to a Rays game perhaps as well. So a lot of fun things on the schedule. I'm excited to be in the city of champions for the first time since December of 2019, obviously with the COVID thing. Um, you know, a lot of travel restrictions and whatnot from the state of Illinois. I could not quite make it down to Florida yet, but I'm excited now. So Thursday is going to be fun, Stunna. I know you're down in Florida. I I just can't wait to get down there and, uh, you know, see what it's like. The Buccaneers town, the Lightning town, WrestleMania weekend. I feel like the city of Tampa is really going to be lit. Yeah, don't forget about Seminole Hard Rock. Yeah, oh yeah, what's Seminole Hard Rock about? Oh, man, blackjack, everything you can think of, man. And the Bettys are out, too. It's a good time. Oh, wow. Wow. So that's a good – and when is that? It's every night, man. Seminole Hard Rock Casino. It's on. Oh, wow. Hell, yeah. Seminole Hard Rock Casino. I'm going to have to check that out as well. I know uh, we – we have... stop. <laughs> What's up? It's like a tour stop. You got to go through at least once. Yeah, we'll make note of that. We'll definitely go through. We have some openings on our schedule for sure. We'll be sure to check that out. I know we're going to check out Charlie's Steakhouse. It's always a good time, a good meal. Like I said, a Rays game. We're going to go to some beach bars, uh, venture out, you know, a little on the town, see what's going on. So it's going to be a great time, Stunna. I'm looking forward to going to Tampa. Speaking of Tampa, talking about our beloved Buccaneers, schedule change a little bit. For the 2021 season, uh, 17 games now. Obviously, they added the seventh playoff teams in the AFC and NFC, respective, in the 2020 season. Now, in the 2021 season, they're up in the schedule from 16 games to 17 games. And how that works is each year alternated. You'll be at the AFC one year, then home against the AFC next year. And it's your sister conference. So, example, the NFC South, which the Buccaneers are in, our sister conference is the AFC South. So we'll be playing the Indianapolis Colts this upcoming year. Stunna, 
Before we get into some upcoming highlighted games on this year's schedule, what's your thoughts about the 17 games? I'm personally not huge on 17. I like an even number of games. 17, mm, I guess it's more football at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm not a fan, uh, especially talk about player safety. Plus, I'm a purist, and it's going to affect uh, records. You know, we just talked about Mike Evans and consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. We talked about the respect you get as a 1,000-yard rusher. Some of these records won't mean the same thing when you add another game. Uh, to the. Uh, I'm sure that um, Eric Dickerson's record, 2,100 yards, will get broken now because you got an extra game. Are, you know? are uh, records going to have to be reset, or I wonder how that's going to work because they're going to be, you know, we've already seen rookie quarterbacks breaking him like crazy, and now, as you mentioned, we got the 2,100-yard Dickerson record perhaps at stake. A lot of these records are going to be at stake and uh, perhaps even given the sleight of hand with the 17th game. Correct. It's it's Like I said, I'm a purist. I'm I, You know, I'm not for it. I understand why they did it, which is fantasy football. Okay. And then the format they did is about the only thing you could do, which is having uh, AFC, NFC get, uh, for the extra game, because if not, you're going to affect the playoffs. You know, so. That is, it's, it's, that's interesting that you bring that up because obviously a NFC versus NFC game would mean more to the Bucks in the playoffs than the AFC, NFC game would. So perhaps – if you think that 17th game really meant that much more, wouldn't they rather have an interconference as you just mentioned? No, I don't think so because uh, your NFC wins is what qual you know, that, that could be a tiebreaker for making the playoffs. Uh, example last year was uh, the Dolphins going 10 and six, but the, the Colts going to the playoffs because they had more AFC wins. That, okay. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Perhaps, um, Maybe since, you know, the NFC would have meant more. If they would have had an extra NFC game, it would have affected the playoff standings, which is not that. And and, and, it, and adding an extra game should not – it shouldn't affect the, the whole league like that. They're only doing it for fantasy football anyway. So what they – so I like what they did where it's interconference. Plus, we don't get to play the AFC that often. You know what I mean? We play them every four years. So maybe you, you could create more rivalries. If you look at the Bucks now, we barely have any rivalries in the AFC. Most all of, most of all of our rivalries are NFC. And you know how you get rivalries. It's going to be a neighborhood thing. It's going to be where somebody took something from you. Like we went up to Green Bay and, and took their hearts, so now we're kind of rivals. Uh, or uh, bad blood, you know what I mean? You you have a game where, where they do something nasty or, they're, or they're, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a conflict. And that's how, you know, kind of like the Rams, you know, it's bad blood there because they, they uh, cheated us out of the NFC championship in 1999 and really 1979 by, by hurting Doug Williams. So it's uh, you know, that that's how you create rivalry. So it, it's better to get those, 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 uh, you know, AFC, NFC type games, I believe. I think Jacksonville would be a nice rivalry to make uh, same state. So you already have that going for you and they're in the AFC South. We're in the NFC South. We could play them. I think that would be a good rivalry perhaps. And I think that's one that we would be on the winning side of most of the time as well. Uh, you know, we already, well, I, think, hit... I think in the eighties, uh, I think in the eighties, uh, the dolphins were our rivals. Cause I think we played them more and then we used to, you know, we used to practice with them too during, cause we always play, we're always going to play Jacksonville, Miami preseason, and then possibly Houston in the preseason because of, you know, the distance, mm -hmm. you know, so, so those are teams we're always going to end up playing in a preseason. So, um, you know, we used to go down to Miami and we would have fist fights and stuff on the practice fields, you know, in the eighties and that's kind of a rival. And then the, the, you know, the games were always more competitive because there's more in the line with the in-state bragging rights. So uh, it, it could be a rival, but like I said, we don't play often enough. And uh, so, you know, our rivals are our division rivals and our conference rivals though, pretty much. Yeah. And once again, you are here listening to the Bucketeers or watching the Bucketeers podcast as we're on YouTube. Now hit the subscribe button 
be notified whenever by turning the notifications button on. You can check out when we go live. You can check out when we upload new videos, new content for you, the Buccaneers fans, the content you need, the Bucketeers podcast. So turn on the notification bell. Uh, subscribe now as well. Help us out and we'll help you out by providing the great content you need. Head over to Twitter. Check us out at Bucketeers. You can find us. We're doing a lot of good things. We're doing some giveaways. Once again, stunned joined by Tampa Tones tonight talking some great Bucketeers in this little short but sweet episode. And we do have some great Bucketeers things happening. We're in the process of creating a new logo. We have our first t-shirts out which are based off the nfl draft as well you could look at those and find those on twitter they say 32nd never felt so good uh 2021 draft and then the backside says bucketeers podcast established july 2020 stun is is actually going out the door tomorrow um i'm sure you're looking forward to that stun i don't know if you've seen the shirts yet or not but uh they're pretty nifty and give that creamsicle type feel i believe yeah, the cream sickle fans are the real Bucks fans. We know that. And, uh, you know, I don't think we've ever drafted 32nd, so unless we traded to it. And it's, it's just a great feeling. It's a great time to be a Buck, just like uh, Tom Brady goes to Disney World, says I'm on the winning team. I'm not joining the dark side. We are the Jedis. And how fun did he have, man? He looked like he was having a blast. Uh, Gronk also had a lot of fun a couple days after the Super Bowl. Gronk went there. Speaking of a superstar that did not go to Disney, Antonio Brown. And A.B. currently is still unsigned. I know you said from the start he might sign somewhere else. He might go somewhere else. We've called a lot of things here in the Bucketeers whether it was Donovan Donovan Smith extensions, Josh Wells re-signing, Lenny F re-signing, et cetera. Um, you know, this is I a call, thing. I called our draft pick being the uh, center from uh, Wisconsin Whitewater, too. And with that's, uh, joint, that's getting some steam. That's gaining a lot of steam. And you may have led that charge, perhaps. I don't know if people would ever admit that or if people will want to take credit for that. But you said that a while ago. You said it on Twitter. You said it on the Bucketeers. And you said it on Time Skew Podcast when I had you on a guest on there. A lot of people probably want to admit that the idea did come from you. But I do believe you kind of got the ball rolling on that. Well, you know, they they uh, they said on uh, you know I'm a, I watch Path of the Draft, I watch NFL Total Access. They said on Path of the Draft that they were gonna they thought he would be drafted higher than Ali Marpet, who was a who was a pretty you know he was like a mid second round pick. So I said you know you're pushing him to the top of the second round. If he's gonna be the top of the second round, he might he could also make it to the bottom of the first round. And he's he's probably the best interior lineman out there to me. Although there are some good ones this year. O line is deep. D line is not deep. Running back is deep. Wide receiver is deep. I'm not really big on the quarterbacks upside, outside the top two. Yeah. Which yeah. Fields to me is number two, though. You know, some people don't think – some people talking about this 26-year-old from BYU. I'm like, no, I'll, I'll take Josh Fields. Yeah, people so, are trying uh, to throw Wilson in there for sure. And um, all their likes, you know, there's Mac Jones floating around. We'll get into the draft here in a little bit. I want to talk about the other thing you might be calling, though. The Antonio Brown having interest, perhaps, from other teams, not back to the Bucks yet. It seems like he wants to come back. It seems like the Bucks want him back. The Pat McAfee show said today the NFL draft might be what's hindering the signing. I personally don't believe that, as there are offers out on the table for AB. To me, it's right. just, you know, we can't give him as much money as he wants. Will he take that Lenny F type pay cut to come back? Or is he going to go explore? I know you said from the start, watch him end up somewhere else. You know, I said that from the start, but um, I also thought he had a better market. And I'm pretty convinced right now he doesn't have a market at all. In fact, I'm pretty convinced right now that the only thing keeping him from re-signing is pride. And just like Bruce Aaron said, we got all the time in the world. It's basically going to be him have to swallow his pride to come home. Because... Like Bruce Harris said in his interview, we put offers out there. So basically they say, here's our offer. If you want to play with us, here you go. And it, to him, you know, once from the past making multi-million dollar contracts, you know, he's probably like, no, nah, man, I, I got to get paid better. 
and and you know how you get paid is you negotiate. They're gonna pay me this. What are you gonna pay? You know. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't think that there's, there's teams that are, that are after him like that. Um, you know, we heard about Seattle and then they just put, gave Lockett an extension. So whatever money they were going to put in wide receiver, that got sucked out. Baltimore, I don't think they're interested. Okay. They got, they got Sammy Watkins. Watkins. Yep. Right. So, you know, they spent their money in wide receiver and they're probably going to draft a wide receiver that with a first round pick. So who who really wants A B? You know, I heard Kansas City. Uh, you know what I mean? But you know, there's smoke, there's fire, I don't see no smoke. So basically I think it's just you know, A B's negotiating with himself against the Bucks. And now we got Jason Lyon. We don't have Mark Dominic anymore because Mark Dominic let the Jets punk us, you know, be hard with Reeves, where we were the only one that, that wanted Reeves Island and you know, they <laughs> we end up giving away too much. You know, this ain't even a trade. He's a free agent. And I think his best opportunity is to be here because, you know, he's got a repertoire with with our coaches. He's got a repertoire with a quarterback. And he even put out there on on the on the uh, his, on the I don't know if Instagram or Twitter that legacy is more important than money. So even he knows that it's about his legacy and the opportunity went back to back more than it is going out and getting paid somewhere. So I, I think he's just trying to, you know, up the ante with the bucks to try to make, get more money. And, you know, these guys, they got to make their money, you know, because this might be his last contract. You never know. He's almost 33 years old. You know, he was injured last year and, and he only played eight game, eight weeks or something. Yeah, so, you know. although I do think he got cheap shot at New Orleans, I don't think that was a, that was a fluke injury, but, um, you know, I, I really think I, I, before I said he might go somewhere, but I didn't understand his market. Kind of like Leonard Fournette. We didn't really know his market. And well, it looked to me like the Bucks were the only team that was really going to give him even the legit money. He, I know he wanted to make $5 million, but the Bucks were the only team that was going to give him close to that. Not to cut you off, but the two markets Lenny have seemed to have both kind of re-signed their running backs. Uh, New England by bringing back James White and Seattle by bringing back Chris Carson, those seem to perhaps close the door on any Lenny F potential market. So if the Chiefs sign a receiver, then then the AB's market is dried up too. Yeah, and if that happens, well, then he really has no choice, and I'm sure, I'm sure he wants to come back to Tampa anyways. Like you said, his market's probably not as deep as he thought it was. And now he doesn't have much of a choice. Now he's just, you know, holding out for a little more money. Hopefully the Bucks and him could make it happen soon, whether it's voidable contracts, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm sure we'll be talking about an A-B signing in the near future one way or another, uh, probably back here in Tampa, obviously. It um, could be any day now as A-B's commenting on their Instagram post, you know, Devin White's replying back saying, yeah, we're just waiting on you to sign because AB said, you know, where's my signing announcement? And Devin White said, waiting on you. We'll see what happens there. Definitely something to keep an eye on. But as me and Stun had just talked about a couple minutes ago, the draft, as we continue on through the Bucketeers podcast here, the draft, we're picking 32nd. Stun had mentioned the Whitewater Center he liked, and then we got into QB talk a little bit. Stun, you said Fields is your second. I agree with you. I don't know what the hype on Zach Wilson is personally or Mac no. Jones, honestly. No, no. I, I would take uh, the guy from North Dakota State. Trey Lance. Both of them. Yeah. I would yeah. take him too. That, I, would, I would put him third on my big board. I mean, that's that's Joe Flacco type. You know what I'm saying? Flacco won a first rounder. And um, who was the other guy? He's, oh, the Zach Wilson. What is he, like 25, 26 years old? That's some Brandon Weed and stuff. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think there was another quarterback from Oregon State that got drafted a while ago that was old like that. So, um, no, I, I definitely don't see neither of them. Now, Fields is legit, man. He was a stud at Ohio State. Just like just like Trey. These guys were the Elite 11 in high school, man. They've always been elite quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the same with Lawrence. I mean, Lawrence could have came out last year. He would have been the number one pick. So those two are your elite quarterbacks. And the Jets, the move they made, they're going to tell you they're coming, to, they're coming for a quarterback. 
the uh, 49ers, they should have made that. They should have tried to get up there with the Jets. I mean, they, they kind of messed that up. And then I think it's funny that, you know, obviously Atlanta is going to trade out a number four for a quarterback needed team. I, I kind of think they told Carolina to take a hike, which is why Carolina had to make a move for Sam Darnold. Where do you think Teddy Bridgewater ends up after that Sam Darnold move? Um, I've heard a couple different things. I've heard the Broncos, perhaps. Do you think he stays in Carolina, or do you think he ends up somewhere else? I, you know, why would he stay in Carolina if all off season they were trying to deal him? You know, I'm like, you don't believe in me. Why would I want to be here? You know. But you never know because the NFL is a business, and at the end of the day, you got to cash that check. But Carolina's not going to pay him a salary, so I'd, I'd rather get quit. I'd rather them cut. I'd be like, cut me or trade me because I want to keep my salary intact. If I'm going to restructure my salary, I'd rather do that for a team that believes in me. You see what I'm saying? Now, I said on Twitter, I, I believe uh, he, could, he might be able to go back to the Jets. You know, is that bridge quarterback? Are they draft yeah. a rookie? Yeah. Yeah. I, I could and he see played it. in the Jets before. Yeah, he played there before um, he got traded to the Saints, I know. And plus the Jets got plenty of draft picks. Yeah. You I, know, so I could them see giving that. up a draft pick ain't going to be nothing, you know. But, I mean, we'll see. Uh, you know, it, it it all depends on on who believes in Teddy, you know, and, and, and what they're willing to give up. I really – I certainly would get, wouldn't give up a background pick. No. No, me neither. Me neither for sure. And it's interesting to see that Sam Darnold, honestly, I think that the Jets got a pretty good haul, but I also think Panthers did a decent job of getting a QB with potential who's young for not a first round pick. Um, what hinders? Well, I, I, I kind of understand it, but I don't, because this is the thing. I know that you don't want to take that, that you got to get through this season. So you need those draft picks. But to me, I'd rather have picks in 2022 than this draft. You know, you got people in, entering the draft that didn't even play last year. Yeah. So, to me, I'd rather, you know, to me, I'd rather stack my gaff, my draft capital in 2022, which is what the Dolphins and the Jets have done. You know, yeah. so so they so they did some pretty smart things. I'm like, this draft is a crapshoot. I'm going to go next year with more sure things. And I've talked about the Bucks maybe doing that if they've traded back. Would they perhaps get draft capital for next year's draft maybe? Because, A, it's going to be hard to sign everyone from this year's class. And, B, uh, you know, we could use younger guys next year and the year after as we will have a lot of free agents in the near future. Right. I, you know, I like that move, but, you know, it takes two to tango. Sometimes people trade into the, you know, they, they want that number 32 pick like um, with uh, Jackson from the uh, Ravens. Lamar so Jackson. Boxes. Great, Lamar Jackson. So sometimes it's, it's appealing, but, again, you, it takes two to tango. You know, like years, I'm always like trade down, trade down, but if no one wants to trade down with you, you pretty much got to take, you know, whoever's on your board of that pick. So, it you know, it's de it definitely is a lot to it. And uh, it will definitely be interesting to watch. But to me, if you're going to trade down or trade out, let's do it before the draft so that, you know, guys like you and I can sleep through Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, uh, and, you know, as it's a late night and we both uh, work the next day, early jobs, may I add. But it's interesting to see how's it going. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens uh, in the draft. You never know with Jason Light. You never know with Bruce. Uh, they traded up last year to get Tristan worse. Light has moved back before. You just never know what's going to happen. So, oh, uh, excuse me on that. But we are battling through the Bucketeers here. And our last segment I want to bring up before we log off is um, the NFC South quarterback, Stunna. Out of Sam Darnold, presumably he's starting in Carolina. Jameis Winston and Matt Ryan. Rank those three in order. Um, who do you think is the biggest threat to the Bucks, uh, and who do you think is the least biggest threat to the Bucks? Well, you know, Matty Ice, out of them three, you know, he's he's got a potential to, to – and I, I don't know about Hall of Fame, but he, he's definitely an all-time great. You know what I'm saying? So he's got a rep. You know, he's got the skill level. Matty Ice is – I don't get why Atlanta Falcons – don't like the guy. I mean, he's definitely been the best quarterback in their franchise history. Brought him new Super okay. Bowl. 
Yeah, he brought him the Super Bowl, he brought him a lot of success, he brought him the playoffs. The pro, you know, it's like uh, you, Cal, Cal and Cal Hurd, who I'm not a great fan of today, said Oakland and Atlanta, their problem's not the quarterbacks. They got good quarterbacks. The problem is the rest of the team. Uh, I've always I've always liked Sam Darnold. You know, he's he, he he's got a high skill set. And uh, you know, we he's a, he's an unknown though. He's definitely an unknown. Uh, Jameis, he's a known. I mean, you know, he's you know he's got great arm talent, but we don't know if uh, you know how he can play as far as uh, you know being an overall quarterback, read the defense, getting the ball out, not being insubordinate, and stuff like that. So uh, if I had to rank those three, I'd probably go one and a tie for a second. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, obviously, I'm glad we have the best QB by far. But between the other three, I think Matt Ryan is leading the way right now. But Jameis and Darnold are those younger QBs with potential, perhaps. I do like Sam Darnold's potential in Joe Brady's offense. Um, you know, anytime you're Adam Gase's offensive gadget for a couple of years, it's probably not a good thing. So we'll see if Sam Darnold could – uh, fix himself and bathe himself out of Adam Gase's offense. Um, it'll be interesting to see Carolina played real competitive last year, pushed the Bucks to the limit. They pushed Kansas City to the limit. They pushed a couple of good teams to the limit. So we'll see what happens to them this year. Um, I don't know. I think the Bucks. Yeah, are the, good. Real, the real question I have about New Orleans is how uh-huh. did they get under the cap? What did they just re- have everybody on this team re- restructure? I don't know. I missed that. You know, they were they were about to be over the cap, and then all of a sudden they got underneath it. So that that's kind of crazy to me. Because I, you know, you still gotta have you still gotta have money to sign your draft picks. I mean, how did they how did they get how did you go from about sixty million over to under the cap? I just don't know how they did it. But. They somehow do it every year. The damn Saints somehow do it every year. It's like you know, there's somehow to get under the cap every year, even though they're X, Y, and Z above it. Um, we'll see if the Bucks could pay it, do the same thing eventually uh, when they're in the muck of all these voidable contracts in a couple of years. I'm sure it might be tough some years, but we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we're in it for now. We're winning for now. But, yeah, I'd like to know how the Saints got under the damn cap, too. That's a question we seem to ask ourselves every offseason. Um, one of these days we'll get an answer, I would hope. Uh, that's about all we could say there on the Bucketeers. Stunna, we said it's going to be short and sweet, man. I do think we had a lot of good convos, though, tonight. We talked draft. We talked A-B. We talked schedule. We've talked shirts. We talked Brady and Disney. Hell, did we miss anything? Um, well, I think, uh, I think we're about done with free agency if we get A-B. And, um... You know, I just – I would like to see the schedule come out. I would like to see who we're doing – what we're doing in preseason. I would like to see what's going on with the OTAs. Are we going to have OTAs or, the, you know, because to me the lockdown should be over at this point. And so uh, especially when we have given out all these vaccines, uh, they always said the vaccine was the key to, to lifting the lockdown. Well, three and a half, you know, million people in Florida have been vaccinated. So I, I, I just don't know what's going on with it. There's a lot of un- – your questions with that but you know it's a great time to be a Bucks fan it's an exciting time you know the the draft used to be our uh our Super Bowl and that's kind of an afterthought so that that's kind of a weird and an abiding thing and really I'm curious to see what the other teams in the NFC do you know is Green Bay going to close the gap you know what are the Rams going to do uh but they always you know they ruin their draft every year I don't know how they they're competitive honestly and um you know, what are the teams in our division going to do? So that's really what to look for in the draft. Yeah, I I think there's a lot to look forward to. As you said, I'm looking forward to seeing what the preseason schedule looks like. I know me and my girl are trying to go to Tampa for a preseason game, see what's up down there. If, uh, you know, as you said, the stadium should be packed this year. So we'll see how that goes. You know, all these vaccines are getting distributed. I think they're opening up more as we see in baseball. So hopefully the Bucks could have – Full fans in the stands this year. We got OTAs to look forward to. We got the draft in our division draft and to look forward to all these moves happening. 
A lot to look forward to between now and defending our crown in next football season. Stunna, closing statements and closing words for the Bucketeers Nation tonight. Uh, it's just a great time to be a Bucks fan. You know, it's they say, you, you know, you were the hunted last year. Now you're going to be the hunted. I said that's great because, you know, y'all always overlook the Bucks anyway. The you uh, the, These teams always give the Bucks their best game because nobody wants to be the team to lose to the Bucks. So we've always gotten everyone's best shot anyway. So it means nothing. But what it does mean is that the national meaning needs to recognize our greatness, which they still haven't done, even though we won the Super Bowl. And so this is this is a year about respect to me. It's a year that we earn our respect. This is a year that we keep our championship swag. And this is a year that we show the NFL that we are the best. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. If we come out playing some really good ball, we uh, come out chomping at the bit. We earn our respect. I don't think that respect ever goes away for the Bucks like it did after our first Super Bowl. It went away pretty fast. I don't think this one smothers out quite as quick, at least. So I think. Compet- well, I, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. When we didn't defend our Super Bowl well, and the Carolina Panthers, they kind of, you know, went. They went to the Super Bowl, I think, the next year, and they did that by coming after us and playing us dirty. And they hurt Mike Allstar to Joe Jerovickis in one game. You know what I'm saying? Just playing dirty and just, you know what I mean, being nasty to us. And that actually elevated them into the Super Bowl by them trying to knock us down a notch. I remember when and they hurt Clifton Smith on a punt. They always play dirty. Oh, man. Man. Carolina, well, I, that was a previous coaching staff, though. Well, I, let me say that. But um, the Carolina was always our, was always just nasty to us. Kind of like New Orleans was nasty to us. And it's funny, like, people – like, I got into a Twitter today about someone trying to talk about Mike Evans getting locked down by, by Lattimore. I said, no, he got locked – we got locked down by, number one, the pass rush because our O-line wasn't a strong then. Number two, we got, he got locked down because the referees allow you to clutch and grab our receivers all the way down the field and never call it. And then people that talk about the refs, New Orleans did the same thing in the playoffs, clutching and grabbing our receivers and, us, and, and getting away with it with no calls. But our players decided we're not going to let this team punk us. We're going to show them who the more physical team is. And we went out and performed in spite of the referee swallowing or whistling, letting uh, New Orleans play dirty ball against us. Yeah. Yeah, New Orleans – they were grabbing us. They played dirty ball against us, a lot of stuff. But no one ever mentions that. No one likes to mention that. Only when we do it, and we don't really do it that often. But, you know, the – B.A. Back. is not going to do it. He said – he even said – he even said after the game, he took a shot at New Orleans. He said, we don't do that. We respect our opponents. See, B.A. is a class act. We're not gonna and we're not gonna win with with dirty play. We're gonna win by by out physicaling you and out scheming you and 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 just wanting the game more than you. Just like Warren Sapp said, he, they didn't allow their defense to play dirty because they wanted to beat teams at their best. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't have said it better. Ba is always the guy who does it um, the right way by the book, and that's what I think we love about Ba. Um, I know I'm I'm a huge fan. I know you're a huge fan of B.A. I think everyone just about is a huge fan of B.A. We can have a whole podcast about him. That'd be a cool one, a B.A. episode. I'm also, I'm also a huge fan of Carlton Davis, by the way. I'm going to go get his jersey just to support him, man. Yeah, we love you, Carlton. Stay strong. I know it's tough incidents. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, hopefully, um, you know, it is. I think he might get fined, kind of like what happened to DJ. Yeah, I could see it for sure. I, I, I could see it for sure. Probably a fine, and, you know, the Bucks put a statement out today. I'm sure some more will come out of it. But, Carlton, um, you know, just educate yourself on the word, and uh, Bucks Nation has your back. So We got your back. Moving on, we got bigger and bigger. We got bigger fish to fry. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, like that 2021 schedule. I hope we resign them. I love the guy. I've loved, I love it when he drafted him. Remember that we drafted him and MJ Stewart the same draft, and we know what happened with the first one. So, you know, he's really carried our team for a number of years, and, and I think he's a staple part of this, this football organization. Yeah, I agree with you there. I completely agree with you there. He's a staple and a growing staple more and more for sure. Um, yeah, 
Carlton, thanks for your good play last year. Please just, you know, educate a little bit, and we'll see what happens. We'll see you back out there making the same great plays next football season. Always a great time on the Bucketeers. He's Stana. I'm Tampa Tones. Be on the lookout for us next week with another great show. Thanks so much for joining tonight. And it was a sweet show. Maybe not as short as thought, but it was surely fucking sweet. Thanks again so much for tuning in. Have a great night.